I'm a happy meat eater, but I do believe it's really important to try and use all of the animal, not let any of it go to waste. So I've come here to Smithfield, London's central meat market, to pick up a pig's head. Let's see what we can do with that. So we've got our pig, this is Gordon, uh, and I suppose the next question is what to do with it. While we're here in Smithfield, we're able to go and visit Fergus Henderson, who is the acknowledged master of, of, of nose-to-tail eating. He's been responsible, I think, for some of the most important changes in British food in the last 20 years. Uh, particularly like his incredibly common sense attitude to it. The way he describes it, eating the whole animal is not only honouring the beast, but it's also the practical common sense thing to do with it. I'm really looking forward to meeting him. Uh, this is going to be a great thing. If I can stop myself just giggling like a girl all the way through this, that, that will be great news. This is it, this is St John. A bit of a temple for foodies. Let's go in and find the man. Now with a pig's head. Tim Hayward, great to meet you. Nice to see you. And your friends. Well, oh, friends, yes. We've named him Gordon, which is probably unfair. But. Ah. <laughs> so we're sure that work. And, um, see what we can do with him. Yes. <laughs> yes. I have a few heads up my sleeve as well. With your respect for English tradition, I rather expected you to wet shave it with a, a, a cutthroat, but no, here I am, gently shaving a pig. So, and there really is quite a lot of hair on there, isn't there? No, they're, they're hairy beasts. Oh. Whenever one reads biographies of you and so on, there's, a, <laughs> there's always this thing that mentioned that you, you obviously didn't train as a chef originally, and, and you, you say that you got it all from architecture and from your mum. Because architecture is a permanent thing. You sort of, you have to explain why you're doing it. Yeah. You should make a question in the kitchen, why am I frying these shots or doing this? What's it, where's it going? What's it taste like? Usual job. The brain falling out. Let's uh, just pop on his tiara. The ear hat. Oh, we've got chicken stock. Chicken stock. Uh, so they brown nicely, which is all good. Oh, nice. Yes. Now, uh, what we're aiming for is sort of alligator and swamp theory. So, right. So we'll cover it. It's just a little bit floating out of the surface. Yes. It's slumbering there. It's so lovely. Ah, <laughs> it is the state of summer. Absolutely. Absolutely gorgeous. Do you, do all of you, do you encourage all of your chefs here to cook? The way you do. There has to be a certain precision to the recipe. Um, that's a bit leeway. <laughs> <'cause> I, <laughs> but um, I think they're all here because they enjoy the way we cook and yeah. think. Do you use solely organic meat or.? Well, it depends. I mean, it's, this isn't organic, cool. but I've seen where it lives, what it eats. It, it's intriguing. It seems, to, it seems to be because organic is so difficult in terms of certification, it does seem that actually. A caring farmer is actually more important than the badge. I think yes. It's sort of I have this theory, you know, in American crime films, the police are all on the crime scene and the FBI said, so I'm going, FBI, bizarre <laughs> crime scene. It's a, and then people go, I'm organic, stand back. So I'm not sure it's a terribly popular view, but there we go. No, but I think it's becoming a much more rational one. <laughs> The brilliant thing is now we can have a glass of something while it cooks. You really need a leather chair and a faint smell of books now. I, I've never actually had tail, but um, Anthony Bourdain writes about it as if it was uh, some kind of religious experience. It's pretty good. Eating the tail. It's, is um, it not crunchy, grunchy, nasty well, cartilaginous? No, no, because yeah. you, you cook them until they're really kind of giving. And then you, if you break on them, a bit of mustard, so a bit of nya. And then nature's sort of like isolated on a stick, but you've got some fat and <laughs> meat sort of on this bone. You know, and you gnaw your way along. We should probably get back and see. Let's our, cut there, shall we? Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> before we start both howling. I think there. so. <laughs> oh dear God, that's indecent. <laughs> <laughs> From something absolutely staggering to something really I wanted to bathe in. So there's watercress going into the hot sauce. 
the will becomes a happy pillow for the head. God, you're right. It just does nestle on a cushion of it, doesn't it? There's Christmas on the top of that as well, but you can feel it's yielding right the way through. God, that's going to be good. Uh, here we go. Oh, that's gorgeous. That is, that's not the other white meat, is it? That's, that's, it's, that's a proper... It's head. There's all kinds of rich flavour in that. I, I, I often imagine pork as being that kind of slightly bland, slightly, slightly pale. But that's just so rich. It's, it certainly will set you up. Mm. Well, this is, the, this is the first day this summer I've been glad for the rain outside. <laughs> this just makes everything work perfectly. It's only polite. It's not the animal on the head. Mm. Well, once you've killed the animal, it's all. But also the textual, flavoursome things that lie beyond the fillet. It's a single other dish where you'd actually do that, and it would be reasonably polite. No, no, in, no, no. In, in, in here. Yeah. <laughs>